So I swear I remember for like a good two years, um, I was kind of checking now and then for Steve uh, to give some type of update. I remember I read somewhere on a forum he was going to write a paper, right? So I kept looking out for it, and I swear I just didn't see it till recently. So I don't know why, but again, um, this is a different web page than his normal web page. WardPowerElectronics.com. But yeah, as usual, he gives pretty good breakdowns and explanations. This right here is actually being a pretty good thing to reference. So, on a base level, you know, you're going to be looking for a drain waveform, something like that. Now, as far as the gate waveform, uh, which he says is the purple right here, haven't quite been able to achieve anything that looks that sinusoidal. It's got a lot of ringing on it. Um, but he does actually explain later that uh, that's just something you might typically see, but it's not necessarily mean. It's not uh, running okay at the time, right? So anyway, uh, pretty good web page. I recommend to read it. So here goes a pretty awesome little layout. So you can see what he's doing. He's, you know, three kilowatts, fairly small heat sink, running at class E. And it's pretty amazing. Um, you know, it's not even running hot, <laughs> right? So this is just one of the, a great example of one of the amazing things about a uh, Class E operation, right? So as you can see again, another close up. Um, pretty simple layout. This is how he's got that laid out. Something very close to it. Very simple, uh, which is using... A sick fit of this particular series which is just laid out where it's got an auxiliary gate but uh, it's laid out a little differently because of that but you got the gate on the far right and the drain on the far left these two uh, middle pins would more or less be a ground right and as you can see like right here it's a ridiculous flame here you can see he's got a really nice waveform there so I really don't plan on actually trying to push anything like that. Um, probably kilowatt would be the most I'd ever want to push, but more around the 500 watt region is really what I'm going for, right? So I want a flame that maybe comes up to around here, so it looks pretty decent. That's that's all I'm, I'm you know, it'd be nice to get maybe half that. I might try it, but uh, I don't really need to because uh, typically I just kind of like running these off DC supplies, right? So anyway, made quite a few of these base circuits, similar fits, but I uh, haven't really tried to ever tune them to run from uh, that high of a voltage, right? But, all right, so I started off, I actually tried making this circuit right here. Uh, so this is using uh, you know, 1200 volt, 150 milliohm on resistance sick fit, right? So basically, uh, you know, considering that he's running this at 200 volts or so, I don't need to quite beef everything up as much, but I figured I'm going to go for 100 picofarad. But instead of stacking this many caps, I uh, went with these right here. So while it's not an exact replication, that's how that ends up looking, right? So same type of layout. Uh, but anyway, unfortunately, what I did was I tried starting off with a primary coil with, I guess it's got about an extra turn on it. Uh, that says about six turns. Uh, so this would be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven or so, right? And I think I used a secondary coil of damn near the same dimensions as that right but i tried starting it up at 20 volts and it just immediately killed it right <laughs> so basically i also got one of these fits and i figured all right well i'll also try to build this circuit as well uh, so basically now what i'm doing because <clears throat> i suppose what i'm going to do is i'm just going to buy a few more of these and try to go for an exact replication i guess but uh, now i've got the other fit which is this one, which I've more or less transplanted on this circuit. So the difference being, you know, he's got different values here. But one thing you can kind of see is, um, 
you know the ratio here between your resonant cap and the cap on the gate right so as far as your capacitive voltage divider there um, it's usually sticking to about that so you know 94 9.4 um, 188 18 you know, 112 in this case um, and you see the uh the basically the pattern there right so adding a little bit of drain capacitance 66 there about 100 there um, but say obviously the main difference here goes a 460 schematic with a 460 but really the main difference uh, you could see is He's got an external voltage here that he's using to bias the FET, um, which obviously is good if you're going to run uh, much higher voltages. So in this case, you know, I'm just going to use a, uh, like with this one, it's just something like this. This little pot of actually just using a little linear regulator to keep a solid voltage. So I'll just feed that like, you know. Feed this like 15 volts, something like that, and uh, that's how I'd set the bias. And the other important bit is also he's adding some uh, gate resistance here. So this is more or less the simple way to add enough phase shift to get a better uh, power factor, right? So you know, while that's typically not always something that <clears throat> I would really try to mess with, especially with uh, something like a 460. You can actually see he doesn't even have gate resistors on the 460. Part of that is, I'm not sure what the gate charge on those are, but it's probably much higher, and uh, those resistors would be getting real hot. These resistors get very hot as well, but uh, they don't quite burn up. You know, here's another iteration. It's real tiny because I basically ran out of board. But, uh, yeah, there you go. So, pretty simple layout. You know, the RF choke would go right here. So you got this inductor right here, positive will go here, negative will go here, you got your gate here on the right where this would be where your uh, resonant cap would go on the other end is the coil, right? And then the other end of the coil right here go to the drain. Uh, but you know, you've just got basically the uh, gate isolated so you could feed it some resistance to add some of that phase shift which really does make quite a bit of difference, you know. Again, like I say, I really didn't used to play with sick vets a lot. Didn't really have a whole lot of, uh, you know, 1%, 1 watt resistors like these on hand. Really never did a whole lot of that, but it can make quite a difference. Although getting the tuning right on these, you know, again, it's never super easy. Get some decent output, uh, but getting Class E and maintaining Class E, you know, that's a, it's always pretty difficult. Here's actually the first one I threw together to play with, uh, you know, same deal, more or less different, little different values. And um, this one is actually using one of these fits right here. It's actually got the uh, lowest on resistance of all of them, but the uh, lowest maximum drain voltage, right? But anyway, yeah, you can sort of see same deal as how this is laid out. Decided to put a you know a little bigger heat sink on there and a um, little 24 volt fan here that'll end up running at like you know 14 or something like that. So again, the thing with this one is I can get a pretty decent flame out of it. Uh, you know, but I'm basically just trying to use the DC supply here, 60 volts max. So I'm you know pushing around the 9, 10 amp volt region to get decent output. But uh, you know, I could tune it back a little bit. Uh, but I found even though the waveforms look pretty dirty to me and uh, it's been difficult to really tune, then uh, it really doesn't get as hot as I would expect. So I've got the gate voltage in yellow and the drain in blue down there. I'm going to turn it up till the uh, till it starts oscillating. So there we go right there. So you can see maxes out the supply, but I've set the CC. So I'm going to cut the bias down. To about right there about nine amps so it's not pulling over the uh, CC you can see that's what the uh, waveforms look like not too good I've tried 
playing around with them a little bit, but that's what I've got right now. So, at that tuning, now I'm going to cut it up just a little bit. So that's about 300 volts on the drain right there, so I'll do about 38. So run that for a little bit. I don't really know at what point it's going to start melting. So again, probably right about now, the uh, capacitor and the coil are stupid hot. So that's only uh, only like 375 watts max. It does drop it down when I uh, kind of load it like that, all right? Yeah, so that's uh, probably bringing it like 48. Yeah, not a huge difference, about 400 watts. But I don't want to go too high uh, on that scope, so just cut it back down to about 30. And then uh, just cut it back off, right? So. Well, wow, that's got a fan going on it. Yeah, I mean, the, the uh, heat sink's still cold. Again, that wasn't a very long run time. But uh, it doesn't develop appreciable heat, let me put it that way. But I can't really get these dots on the capacitor. Yeah, it's pretty hot to the touch. If I squeeze it too hard, I'll burn my fingers. Primary's not too bad. I mean, that secondary is very hot. All right, now here goes the battery scope. So I'm going to just cut it up a little bit more. So again, I'm going to start at about 30 and start cranking it up. There we go. Then I'm going to back it down slightly. So again, <laughs> looks pretty crap. Now, it's 40 again. So now I've got a napkin back there just to kind of help show the flame. <laughs> and hopefully it won't light the napkin on fire. So I'm just kind of curious if running it off this scope with these probes might actually make any bit of a difference. So I'm just going to run it like this for a while. see what happens I don't know I'm just gonna try to crank it real quick just kind of like twiddle it oh there goes 50 well 49 hovering on the CC so I don't know if that'll if that'll pop it it might if I let it run like that because again I don't like the tuning and that flame is <laughs> getting pretty close to that net getting I'm hoping I'll be able to sort of see this rise. Look, it can, you can see it rising now. It's 
kind of, I don't really know what's going on. I think, <laughs> I think it might be getting affected by the field. I don't know. Anyway, that's about 500 watts right there. So at about 480, 490. So that's not quite what I wanted. But it's up there. I don't really know if I could... Yeah, so again, 50 volts. I'm not sure what was going on with this thing wigging out. Yeah, still cold. I bet the gate resistors are really, really hot. Yeah, so that uh, doorknob cap is super duper hot. So again, uh, I'm not sure if that would be viable. Probably have to stack some more of those uh, parallel something up. Or, I don't know, heat sink that some kind of way. I don't even know if that if you could do that with those. Um, and then, yeah, the secondary is burning up. So, I'm surprised that former didn't melt already, right? But otherwise, pretty cool. And, uh, again, not really perfect tuning at all. But as far as the heat that was developing, I feel like I could let it sit there and run like that. Just almost indefinitely. And I'm not sure if this thing would ever get hot. It's just, uh, you know, again, the RF cap and the secondary is what I'd be worried about. 